So it looks like we have a fix built in now to the Blu-ray exploit and the web browser exploit for the black screen and save data corruption issues with these exploits. So up until this point with the older versions of the Blu-ray exploit and the web browser exploit, we had this problem where certain games like Grand Theft Auto uh, Vice City is one of the ones that has this issue, but there's many other games that also have these issues where your save files will get corrupted or you'll get a black screen when you launch the game and it will not progress into the game. And even when you try and close the game, it can get stuck trying to close the game and then, you know, error out and say it failed to close properly. So you have these issues with certain games and it's only when loading the lapse kernel exploit from the Blu-ray exploit or from the web browser exploit, the Japanese game method of loading the jailbreak does not have this problem. It's just the Blu-ray and the web browser version. So this fix has been applied now to both versions and it's essentially the same kind of fix as the AIO fix plugin that you can add in Goal 10, which we were using previously to resolve most of these issues. But this version is slightly improved and it's built into the exploit itself so that once you actually run the jailbreak, it will automatically apply the fix so that you no longer require that Gold 10 plugin to be applied. And I'll also show you what to do if you're running an older version of the Blu-ray disc that does not have this patch applied. Okay, so taking a look at the Blu-ray exploit first, if we go to the releases section, we can see that there is a new version here with Laps version 1.2, which adds the AIO fix. So that has now been included. So all you need to do is download this 1.2 version of the ISO and then simply burn it to a disk using image burn or equivalent software just to get it burned to the disk. And then once you have the disk burned, you can insert that back into your PS4. And if we take a look here, I've got GTA uh, Vice City installed. So we're going to go ahead and run the new 1.2 version. So a couple of updates here. You can see it now tells you the version in the title, but so tells you that it is version 1.2 when we go to launch this. So once the Blu-ray disc actually loads up, we should get a notification now that pops up with this version, showing you also the version number by the developer. So that shows up and now we have the AIO patch completed successfully. That's the patch that actually fixes the black screen and save data corruption. So it's automatically applied. And then we get our main payload loaded from either the USB or the hard drive and that will get it loaded there. So that is the updated version. So if we go ahead and close out of the disc player now, we'll see if the patches are applied successfully and if it's resolved the black screen issue on Vice City. So I'll go ahead and close out of the disc player now. And then once that finishes, we can go ahead and just confirm, as you can see in plugin settings, the plugins loader is not enabled. I don't even have any plugins installed on this console right now, but we'll go ahead and launch uh, Vice City and we'll see what happens. So hopefully, if all things are good, it should actually uh, load up and we should get the, um, yep, there we go, the Rockstar logo. So only took a few seconds there on a black screen and then we're into the game. So it has successfully fixed the black screen issues, should also fix the save data corruption issues. One thing to mention is that if you have tried to load the game before when you still had the black screen issues, it may have caused issues with the save file, which means even after the fix is applied, you could still run into issues running the game with the fix applied. My recommendation would be just to delete, you know, the corrupted save and stuff from the console and then try and run the game again once the fix is applied and it should resolve that issue. But as you can see, we're up and running with the game. So the fix is automatically applied with this version. So there's no need to install that AIO plugin in order to fix this. Also, if you're using the new version and you still have the plugin applied, make sure you disable it because you shouldn't have the AIO fix plugin being applied as well as this patch being applied at the same time. So if you're still using the plugin, make sure you disable that before you start trying to use this version that applies the patch automatically. So anyway, that is the deal with the Blu-ray exploit there. So what happens if you're running one of the older versions of the Blu-ray exploits? Because of course, a lot of people are buying discs on eBay and places where they don't have the ability to burn their own discs. So if you've already bought a disc, that's running an older version of the exploit, this patch will not automatically be applied. So what can you do to apply this patch if you are running the older version? I've rebooted the PS4 now. I've got one of my older discs inserted here that just says Blu-ray disc. And this is version, I believe 1.1 of the lapse ISO before the automatic fix was applied. So we'll run this one just to get the jailbreak loaded. And there we go. First time. 
And there we go, we have Gold Hen loaded successfully, but no AIO fix plugin applied with this particular version. There's a few options here. You could stick with the, obviously the AIO fix plugin. Uh, you could still use that, but it's not really recommended because there are some issues with that one that I think are resolved in this uh, new version that, that is applied automatically with the latest version of the Blu-ray disc. So we kind of want to get that version running instead. So what we can do here, first of all, is if you're connected up to your network, so if we go over to network and if we're connected to the internet here, or at least to your home network, you can head over to the Gold Hen settings and go over to the server settings and enable the bin loader server, which then runs on the PS4's IP address on port 9090. If we then switch back over to our computer and go back to the BD jailbreak project and scroll down to option seven here, adding the AIO fixes to Laps ISO. So it says, if you are, of course, using older versions, 1.0, 1.1, or 1.1b, then what you can do is load the payload from the Gold Hen or PS4 Hen normally from the USB, and then send the AIO fix network elf file. So we already loaded the Gold Hen payload from the uh, hard drive or USB, but then you can download the AIO fix plugin separately here, AIO fix network.elf, so I can select this option and then download the raw file. You can see I've got it downloaded here. And then you can just send it using a payload injector like Netcat GUI. I'll leave a link to this in the description. You just drag in the file, the payload for the fix. And then you just enter your PS4's IP address in this box. And then 9090 is the port number in this box. And then when I click the inject payload button, what will happen on the console, as you'll see, is the bin loader server will receive that payload and then execute it for us. So there we go. We're now starting the AIO patch and it should find the correct pattern, apply the patches, and then we should get the same message we got with the new version saying the AIO patch is completed successfully, at which point now we should be able to launch our Grand Theft Auto Vice City again and it should work as it did before. So that's another way that you can fix it. Now I will show you maybe a little bit more of a convenient way to do it because having to open up a separate program on another device like your computer to run this fix is obviously not ideal. There is a better way that you can do it on the console itself, which I'll also show you here. So the other option is to use a homebrew application. So on the computer, what we can do is download the payload guest application from Al Azif. Download it from pkg-zone.com, the homebrew store. So we can either download it using the homebrew store on the console itself, or you can just download it here on the computer. So we can download for PS4, and then there's the PS4 Explorer version. You can also download this for PS4 as well. So you want to download these homebrew applications. You can see I've got them copied over here. And then we're just going to put those on a USB drive. So I've got a USB drive here. I'll copy them in here. And what I'll also do is I'll create a new folder here called payloads. And then inside that payloads folder, I'm going to copy the AIO fix network.elf file in here. And then I'm going to rename it and change the .elf extension to a .bin extension. So that's only because payload guest only recognizes uh, .bin files, it seems. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then eject that USB drive and plug it in to my PS4. Okay, so now on the PS4, all we need to do is install those by heading over to our Gold Hen settings, debug settings, package installer. And it should detect the package files on the USB drive. So this is a GTA Vice City that I installed to test. But I'm just going to install, of course, the payload guest application and the PS4 Explorer application. So we'll get both of those installed. OK, so with that installed, we can now open up PS4 Explorer so that we can actually install the payload for payload guest. So we'll do root access and then we'll press right and left on the D-pad to switch between your USB drives. Select the one that has your USB contents and then we're going to hover over payloads press triangle and select the option to copy it and then press circle twice and then go into the data folder on the hard drive and then simply press triangle and paste it to paste the payloads folder in this location and that is basically it and now we should be able to load the payload from payload guest itself so again I'll just do a quick reboot so that we're not running the payload anymore so that we can test this okay so I rebooted my ps4 and loaded the version 1.1 of the iso again which does not apply the fix so we're not running the fix right now, but what I can do is just load payload guest. And then when I load this, we can see our AIO fix plugin shows up. I can select X to launch it. And that is it, payload received. 
And if I go ahead and exit out of this now, it should just start loading the plugin itself. So there it is, payload received from uh, the local host. And then we're starting our AIO patch. And there it is, pattern found, applying patches. And there it is, AIO patch is now successfully completed. We'll try and launch the game again. And again, this should now work. So, so that's the other way you can do it. Just install the payload for the patch in Payload Guest so that you can use that application to quickly launch it to apply the fix. And that is, uh, you know, one of the other easier ways to do it so that you don't rely on another device like your computer or phone or some other device to send the payload over the network. You can just do it from Payload Guest. Now, the fixes have also been applied for the PS3 web browser version of the Exploit 2. You've got this version for firmware 9.00 by Chameleon. So you can go to kmeps4.github.io slash ps3 to use this version. You can see here, all games should now work properly. The patches were made by ABC for 8.0x and were ported to 9.00. Uh, so that's been implemented. And then there's the Alaza version, which works from, well, the whole exploit works from 7.00 to 9.60, but I think the patches currently are only applied for 8.00 to 9.60. So you can see here, we've got added a built-in workaround for the black screen for firmwares 8.00 to 9.60. Feels more like a workaround versus a true fix and 7.xx is still to come. So for now, anyway, if you're using the web browser version, you can use Al Azov's version, which will also apply the black screen fixes automatically when you load the exploit. So the patches are also applied here to the web browser versions of the exploit too. This is still considered a workaround than a permanent fix because it does not fix everything. There could still be some issues here or there that are still causing a problem. But for the most part, the main issue of the save data corruption and the black screen issues not allowing certain games to launch at all is being addressed here by this temporary workaround. So anyway, that's going to do it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, as always, I'll hopefully see you guys